If you've been struggling with your prayers recently, I want to make a promise to you. And that is that if you watch this video to the end, you're going to hear and see things presented in a way like never ever before. And I'm confident inshallah ta'ala that you will never miss a prayer ever again. I've also placed a little treat for those of you who are entrepreneurs that want to find a way to increase your provision and your money. And guess what? There is a direct relationship between your prayers and your bottom line. Now, it's important that I mention this is going to be a bit of a tough video but if you're a real man inshallah ta'ala and you want the truth you watch all the way to the end in case you're wondering who i am my name is Imran ibn Mansur. i'm a seven figure entrepreneur with eliza with his permission and i'm also a student of islamic knowledge and i give da'wah without any further ado let's get it cracking and like i said i've got that little delight and that little treat for you at the end Alhamdulillah, Assalamu Alaikum, welcome back to another episode of Righteous and Rich. It's Thursday, so this is a righteous episode. In today's episode, inshallah, we are going to be discussing the Salah. Now, this is one of the five pillars of Islam. A pillar being something that holds up that which is above it. In a building, the pillars are what allow the roof and the rest of the building above to stay in place. That's why when people want to demolish a building, what do they do? They blow up the pillars, because once the pillars are gone, everything above it falls down. And the Salah is one such pillar of Islam. And without it, your deen is in peril. So in today's episode, inshallah, we're gonna be discussing the Salah from a variety of different angles. The first is why is the Salah so important in Islam? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri wa hlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. So why is the Salah so important in Islam? It's in the term, it's in the name Salah. Salah, some of the ulama, they mentioned, the scholars mentioned that it comes from the word Sila or has a relationship with the word Sila in the Arabic language. And Sila means connection. So it's your connection. It's the connection between you and Allah. It's the thing that connects you to your Lord, right? And Allah Azza wa legislated this as the first obligation after accepting Islam. So after you've taken your Shahada, this is it now. This is where it begins. And Imam Ibn Qayyim in his book, um, Kitab al-Salah, it's got many other names as well, but it's his book about the Salah. Um, he mentions about eight or nine things that make the Salah unique and make it completely different and show its importance to every other act of worship in the deen of Islam. This is something that Hajj doesn't have. These are things that Zakat doesn't have. This is things that obedience to your mom and dad don't have. This is, some, these are, this is a list of things that only the Salah has And I'm going to mention them very quickly The first thing is that the Salah is the first thing That is legislated and obligated on you After the Shahada Because the first action That is obligatory on you As I've mentioned The second thing is that It's the first thing that you will be asked about On the Day of Judgment Think about it Akhi, We've got our entire lives That are going to be accounted for On the Day of Judgment Every good deed and every sin that we've done Every responsibility that we had Allah said وَقِفُوهُمْ It's going to be said to them Stop them إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ They are to be questioned And the first thing that they are Asked about is the salah, and the Prophet said, if the salah Salam is good, then everything else after it will be good. The second, the third thing is that the salah was legislated in the sky, which we're going to talk about more towards the end, inshallah. Every other legislation, Hajj, Zakat, everything was legislated on earth, but for the salah, Allah Azza wa Jal raised the Prophet Salam, to the highest heaven to a point that even Jibreel could not pass, and Allah Azza wa Jal legislated on the Prophet in the Salam. heavens, in the heavens, salah. That's how important it is that the Prophet got lifted off from the earth. And the famous Isra wal Mi'raj. Uh, the story of the night journey, right? Then the next thing is that it is the obligation that's mentioned the most in the Quran. It's the thing that's mentioned the most in the, most in the Quran. We're, we're, how many now? Four. Four. Um, the next thing is because the people who enter the hellfire, when they asked, why they entered the fire and they mentioned a list of things. The first thing they will mention is Lam nakum al We were not those who prayed. So they mentioned it's asked Ma fi saqar. what caused you to enter fire when they're in the hellfire burning? Lam nakum al musallin wa lam nakum miskin. We didn't pray, we didn't feed the poor. Wa kunna nakhudu ma'al khaidin wa kunna nukadibu biyumidin. We used to disbelieve in the day of judgment. We disbelieve in day judgment. This list of things that they give. What's the first thing that they start off with? So. Salah. Because when the people enter hell, that's the first thing because of the salah. The next thing is, and this one's really interesting. Akhi, the salah, its obligation does not fall at any point, at any time, as long as you have your mind. So if you can't stand, you sit down. If you can't sit down, 
you're on your side. If you can't pray, even on your side, right, you 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 can pray with your finger. If you can't pray with your finger, some of the scholars mentioned with your eyelids. If you can't with your eyelids, you can't even open your eyes. In your heart, you mm. do the you do the motions of the prayer in your heart. Mm. Akhi, the salah is the one thing under no circumstance. Like the obligation of the salah never goes. Like you have to add deep this. This is an act of worship that under no circumstance. Akhi, in war, in battle, in battle, it was legislated to pray. Not just pray, but in congregation. Unless you're actually physically in the middle of the fighting and you can't pray in congregation, but you will still pray in that state, in that circumstance. Akhi, the salah time could be leaving and a lion is chasing you. A lion is chasing you and the salah time is leaving. You must pray. Now, even pray though what? yeah, even though you may not pray with takbiratul ihram because you're in a state of necessity, but you will pray, you 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 will start the salah in the state that you're in, running away from the lion, even if you can't face the qibla. That's mad. That's yeah, salah under no circumstance does the salah ever drop. In no circumstances does the salah ever drop. And that makes the salah unique. Other, other, like hajj can drop if you don't have the ability. Zakat can drop if you don't have the ability. Fasting can drop if you don't have the ability. Right? Jihad can drop if you don't have the ability. But uh, salah can't drop under any circumstance. So do you, I, I hope people are starting to see how serious this is now. Right? The next thing is... That's a real right there. Yeah. Huh? That's a real right there. Yeah. The, 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 the next thing is that the salah, the Prophet referred to as amud. Amud is, you know, you talked about the pillars. Mm. It's, Amud is the central pillar. Mm. If I knock down a pillar, I've made the building very weak. But it might still stand in some flimsy way. That's like if you don't do hajj or zakat. But if I knock down the central pillar, you know the one pillar in the middle that holds everything up? Mm. That's not the Amud. Then the whole building collapses, even if you do the other pillars. For those that, oh, okay, I'll fast in Ramadan, but I won't pray. Mm. Right? The Prophet said it's the amud of the religion. The next thing is that the salah is legislated on every type of person. So it's 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 the salah is obligatory on the one who is a free man and a slave. Some things are not obligatory on the slaves. It's like the slaves don't have to pay the cat, right? Male and female. female. Old and young. Young. Poor and Rich. rich Sick and Healthy, healthy. Traveller and Resident, resident. No, no situation with salah drops the, 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 the way in which you pray might drop When you travel you do half mm. When you're really really sick You might combine Right Dhuhr and Asr Or Maghrib and Isha You can't combine Asr and Maghrib You can't combine Fajr with anything But the only ones you combine is Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha If you're really sick and you can't pray It might change the, 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 the way in which you deliver it but it's obligatory upon every single type of person, right? Only exception being, obviously, when a sister's on her menses. When a sister's on her menses, of course, yeah. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Okay, يَقْبَلْ مَنْ أَجَابَهُ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا بِالْتِزَامِ الصَّلَاةِ كَمَا قَالَ قَتَادَ عَنْ عَنِسْ لَمْ يَكُنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم يَقْبَلْ مِنْ من أجابه عفوا إلى الإسلام إلا بإقامة بإقامة الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would not accept anyone's Islam unless he agreed to pay, pray. The Prophet wouldn't accept his Islam, wouldn't take it from him, right? And and then here's a really interesting one, right? Because the acceptance of all of the other acts of worship that you do rests what on the acceptance of the salah. Imam Ibn Qayyim said, لِأَنَّ قَبُولْ سَائِرَ الْعَمَالِ مَوْقُوفٌ عَلَى فِعْلِهَا Allah won't accept any other act of worship that you do if you don't pray your salah. فَلَا يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ مِنْ تَارِكِهَا صَوْمًا Allah won't accept your fasting. وَلَا حَجًّا He won't accept your hajj. وَلَا صَدَقَةً He won't accept your, your, your charity. وَلَا جِهَادًا He won't accept your jihad. وَلَا شَيْءًا مِنَ الْعَمَالِ كَمَا قَالْ عَوْنِ بْنَ عَبْدِ لَا إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا دَخَلَ قَبْرَ سُئِلَ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِ أَوَّلْ شَيْءٍ يُسْأَلْ عَنْ He said when the person enters his grave, the first thing that he's asked about is his salah. If the salah is good, then everything else after it will be good. If the salah is bad, everything else after it will be bad. Will be bad. And the and the and and of course he mentions the grave, but also the prophet mentioned on the day of judgment. أول ما يحاسب be an abd من عمله يحاسب بصلاته. فإن صلحت فقد أفلح وأنجح وإن فسدت فقد خاب وخسر. The first thing that a slave is asked about on the day of judgment is his salah. If it's good, everything's after everything else after it will be good. But if the salah is bad. Then it doesn't matter that you gave all this charity and you were so good to your mom and dad. فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرْ 
that person is destroyed and is lost. Yeah, subhanAllah. It's uh, very clear. And, you know, then we come to the narrations where it talks about those who leave off this great act, right? Where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned so many times in so many different ways the punishments or the consequences of those that leave the Salah from them being a person, all of his deeds will be nullified. All of his good deeds will be nullified. Another one being that whoever leaves off, I believe it was the Asr prayer that was mentioned, they are not from amongst us. You know, and, and there are like uh, there are many hadith and even in the Quran it mentions those who, who don't pray, right? Why then is it that some people many people rather don't pray? Either they delay their prayers to the end of the day because they're busy with work and then they want to come to it right at the end of the day, try and pray them all together. Some just fully just leave it off. Like how can a, a person who claims to be a Muslim do that? Perhaps one of the reasons is because they don't know what you just said. Which is that like it's disbelief to leave the salah. The Prophet clearly well, yeah. said, Man taraka salah faqad kafar. The one who abandoned the salah has is disbelieved. The Prophet said, Whoever left off an asr prayer, ka'annahu utira ahla wa mala kama qal. It's as if he lost his wealth and all of his children and his wife and kids and everyone. Just deep it for a second. The Salatul Asr, the Asr prayer, which by the way, it applies to every prayer, not just Asr. Missing one Salah, it's as if you've lost your life savings, your car, your house, your wife, everything, and all of your loved ones, your, your wife, your children. One Salah, you understand? Missing one Asr prayer, the Prophet said, فَقَدْ حَبِتَ عَمَلُهُ His actions have become nullified, right? <laughs> Guys, your Salah, is something that keeps you safe. Mm. The Prophet وسلم, said, Umirtu an uqatil al nas, hatta yashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The Prophet وسلم, said, I was commanded to fight the people until they accept la ilaha illallah. Right? And then the Prophet said, Wa yuqimu salah until they establish the prayer. Which is why the Prophet وسلم, before he would invade and enter a place, he would wait to see if the adhan was men, made. If the people prayed, they would not to be fought. Sometimes there were people that some of the sahaba would say, he's a hypocrite. Let's execute him. And the prophet say, he prays. Right? He prays. So salah is something that what? Keeps you safe. Now I'm not saying that anyone goes around and starts harming anyone and spilling anyone's blood. That's not my point here. What I am talking to you about is what the scholars and the fuqaha and the, and the Islamic jurists have mentioned. If we were to live uh, implementing the Sharia of Allah, Azzawajal, what it would look like. And what it looks like is this, is the overwhelming majority. Look at the words, not majority. The overwhelming majority are in agreement that when the person leaves the salah, mm. he is executed. The difference is, is it when he leaves one salah? I.e. he left dhuhr, so he's executed after. Some say it's two. It's when he's left dhuhr and asr together because dhuhr and asr can be combined. Like when, for example, a person uh, is traveling or he's sick or for specific circumstances, you can combine those prayers. So they say it's when two. And then the, the other view is that, no, we wait three salawat. Wait three prayers. If three prayers pass, and he hasn't, he hasn't prayed, then the, 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 the Islamic judge, of course, is not in anyone's hand, would order the execution of the person. Do you understand? This is how serious it is. Now, there is a difference of opinion between some who say it's major disbelief and some who say it's minor disbelief. They, they, they agree it's disbelief. That's one thing that people shouldn't make, make a mistake. That some say it's disbelief that takes you outside of Islam immediately, so then that person executed as an apostate and some say it's no it's it's disbelief that doesn't take you outside of Islam but the person is 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 executed because they have committed a crime which the deen doesn't allow and because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i was commanded to fight the people until they established the salah right because like, you only live on this earth to worship allah now again just to be very clear no one is to go and harm anyone because it's not your place and the authority wasn't given to you right this is for the Islamic judge, for the Islamic scholars. There's a due process of Islamic court that's implemented. 
and you know this is not i'm not mentioning this so you can look down on others no so you look at yourself right so you can look at yourself and you can see how serious this is well someone might say brother Amar, but you mentioned earlier that that's the overwhelming majority's view what about the ones that are the fringe minority right the minority view yeah let's talk about their view what do they say the ones who say that you don't execute the person they say you put him in jail that's the least that's the least circumstance that person is locked up do you understand that person is locked up now this shows the seriousness now of course in any one of those situations that the person repents and starts praying again then of course the, the penalty is lifted from him right um but to show you how serious this is so yeah and and hellfire i mean we can talk about some of these hadith if you want you know like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فمن خلف فخلف فخلف من بعد خلف اضاعوا الصلاه واتبعوا الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا allah said there is a, there is a group that came after them اضاعوا الصلاه they they wasted the prayer they wasted the prayer meaning they prayed it but not properly or they yes yeah, so pray? if i'm not mistaken and someone can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but the tafsir of the ayah and many of the mufassirin and sahaba mentioned that they prayed it late yeah they, they prayed it late like the ayah um uh, woe to those who who pray because they prayed the salah late so what happens to them فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّ غَيْ where, what is it? it's a valley in hell it's the lowest place in hell it's in the, it's in the lowest part of the hellfire it's a place where the 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 the, the, the he, he mentions it here let me just give you the hadith exactly inshallah ta'ala naam the hadith is هُوَ نَهْرٌ فِي جَهَنَّمٍ it's a river in hell خَبِيثُ الطَّعْمِ right it's got filthy food بَعِيدُ الْقَعْرِ right so it's 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 a valley it's in the lowest part of hell fire it, sorry, it, sorry it's a river um, it's got like the, the, the pus of the people that are there okay, that's for the people who it's the, the salah Imam Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Qayyim argues something deep here he said because this is the lowest part of hell we know the, the, the believers who go to hell what level of hell do they go to? Which means you say lowest, you mean the deepest. The deepest. Not lowest is in the least. Yeah. You yeah, mean yeah. the worst. The, the worst, yeah. So what what is the place for the believers who go to hell? They would only be on the top part of Jahannam. Mm. Because the top part of Jahannam is the least punishment, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's the least. The fact that they will go to Ghayya, the lowest part. Ibn Qayyim says that shows that they're not believers anymore. Oh. They're not believers anymore, right? There's so much uh, other evidence. Uh, Allah talks about the disbelievers. They didn't believe. They didn't pray. Rather, they disbelieve. They turned away from the salah, right? If they establish the prayer and they give the zakat, only then are they your brothers. In religion, i.e., they are not your brothers in Islam if they don't what establish the prayer. The like, there's so much. This is it's scary and it's very scary. It's very very scary. Alladin hum an salatihim sahun, right? Uh, the, the Sahaba asked the Prophet, that Allah said, "Woe to those who who do to who do sahu to their in their salah." And the Prophet ﷺ said, Those who pray at the wrong time. Those who, 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 who wait until the salah time finished. That's very common in, the, in Pakistani culture. They call it qaza. And they just intentionally, yeah. because they're busy, they're out and about, whatever, they'll say, we'll just pray when we get Qaza home. is only for the one who genuinely, genuinely forgot or he overslept and he, and he wasn't aware. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look what he says. He said, uh, on the day of judgment the people will be to be will be told to make sujood to Allah but there will be those that won't be able to make sujood their backs will become straight they won't be able to go down into, into prostration the reason is because when they were alive 
and they were healthy and they were cool to make sujood. They used to hear the adhan, they never used to pray. So now on that day of judgment, they won't be able to pray. There's so much more to it, but I guess there's other things that we want to discuss as well. So we mentioned those that waste the prayer and one form of that being those that delay the prayer. But what about people who pray, but they rush? Like, and I remember when I was very young, I used to be very guilty of this as well, because like if my, if my mom would see me praying, and I'm talking about like, probably before people maybe, or just like very, very early days. I used to pray in my mind. So, in my mind, literally, until today, when I'm in like, when I'm traveling and I'm in the, you know, uh, in the prayer room at the airport or in other such places, I see it regularly. And it's almost as if, you know, in, in the, there's a saying, Qadi uh, Ferrari, you know, like someone's just zooming through the prayer. Like, what about, that like what, what what are the ramifications if you're not praying your salah with proper concentration with proper do, giving it the the rights the ihsan that it deserves so look what imam ibn qayyim says in a chapter you know it's so interesting about it we talked about the topics that we want to talk about in this mm. right in this uh podcast and i told you write a list of things that you want to discuss and literally every single thing that you mentioned in the list is a, is a separate chapter in this book the praying the salah quickly and rushing it, praying it at the wrong time, abandoning it. It's like Imam Ibn Qayyim wrote this to show you how important the salah is. Mm. So there's a section where he mentions فَهَذِهِ سِتْتُ صِفَاتٍ فِي الصَّلَاةِ مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ النِّفَاقِ He said there are six characteristics of hypocrites with regards to salah. Okay. Six characteristics of hypocrites with regards to the salah. salah. Number one, al kasdu عند القيام إليها. The first is to stand lazily towards the salah. To be lazy, to pray lazily. The evidence for this is in the munafiqin yukhadi'oon Allah wa wukhadi'oon wa idha qamu ila salati qamu kusala. When they stand for the salah, they stand lazy. It's like even, in, for example, in, in the military, when a general or someone comes, or even people leave the courtroom, uh, in the UK at least, you have to stand up. Straight, yeah. not give that respect. Definitely military. You know, but if you're just slouching, you know, there's, mm. there's different ways of standing. Mm. There's different ways of standing. Sometimes if you're standing, you're, you know, you're kind of just like, uh, you're just going for the motion, like this, like that. It's very different to, uh, to being upright. Yes, being upright, present. you're there, you're present, right? They stand lazily. The second thing is, You're just praying to show off to other people so others can see you pray. It's not for mm. Allah's sake, just so I don't look bad in front of the people. And the ayah mentions that after. He said the next thing is تَأْخِيرُهَا Is delaying the salah mm. So not outside of the time Even the hypocrites wouldn't delay the salah outside of the time Because they would expose themselves as disbelievers now, right? Mm. Um, but the Prophet ﷺ said The salah of the hypocrite is the one who waits for the sun To what? Start to dip And then when the sun is between the horns of shaitan It's about to dip he quickly goes and he, like a crow, like what does a crow do? He pecks, pecks, his pecks. He, pecks his, he pecks the floor. He just pecks the floor four times for Asr and then he doesn't remember Allah a lot. The Prophet said, Tilka salatu munafiq. That's the prayer of the hypocrite. That shows you that the salah should be prayed slowly. Mm. Right? It doesn't mean you have to pray too slowly, but every position needs to be given its right, which means that when I'm, when I'm going into ruku, I've got to pause in ruku. For my body to become still to a point where I can comfortably say the dhikr, the tasbih, subhanahu rabbi al azim that is supposed to be said in that, right? At least once, minimum, minimum, mm. subhanahu rabbi al azim in that position, and then I get up. Sami Allahu liman hamida. The Prophet وسلم, talked about the one who steals from his prayer, the one who steals from his prayer. Who is he? He's the one who steals from his sujood and he steals from his ruku'. He steals from his sujood, steals mm. from his ruku'. How? By not doing his sajda and his ruku' properly, he rushes it. He just pecks. The Prophet said, Tilka salatul munafiq. Right? That is the prayer of the, the hypocrite. So uh, the term peck, it sounds so ridiculous. Like, but it's what people do. Bro, honestly, like literally, it's just like you haven't even finished going down. You already, you know, like, you know, when someone's bench pressing and uh, they just bounce you off their chest. Yeah. Like, the, literally it's like that. You, you haven't even finished going down yet and you're already mm -hmm. starting to come back up. It's, it's, it's sad, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, the, the, there's a hadith of the Prophet, it says, <laughs> The salah 
is a skill. Allah says, فَمَنْ وَفَى وُفِّيَ لَهُ وَمَنْ طَفَّفَ فَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ مَا قَالَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الْمُطَفِّفِينَ So you know when it comes to transactions and business, mm. Allah says, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Woe to the petty thief who plays with the skill, right? Might make it seem like, you know, you know he's giving you something good. Uh, he, he, sorry, he, he, you know you mess with the skill, you make it seem like I'm giving you a weight for a certain amount. But then maybe, you know, you can mess with those classical skills where it looks like it's heavy, mm. but it's not. Mm. So really it's less. The guy looks at the skill and says, okay, so here, this is worth five gold coins. Here's five gold coins. But he's messed with the skill. It's actually worth four gold coins. So Allah said, woe to the, to the petty thief. The Prophet said, the salah is also a skill. And whoever, man taffafa. Whoever is a petty thief, he steals from his salah. فَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ Then you already know what Allah said about the petty thief. Woe to him. Mm. Right? This, the destruction to that person. So again, the characteristics, Imam Ibn Qayyim said, number one, standing for the salah, praying lazily. Number two, showing off in the salah. Number three, delaying the salah. Number four, praying quickly, pecking the floor. Number five, وَقِلَّةُ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ فِيهَا Remembering Allah very little in the salah. Praying but your mind is... Also. No, no, not even that. But you don't even remember a lot. Like the, the like saying Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Say it three times, bro. Sunnah. Right? If a situation where you are really in a, you can say it once, but say it three times. Say when you come up, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida, Rabbana wa Lakal Hamd. And sometimes extend it. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. And then extend it. اللهم ربنا لك الحمد ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء بينهما وملء ما شئت من شيء بعد أهل ثناء والمجد حق ما قال العبد to the end right and between your sujood ربي اغفر لي right ربي اغفر لي sometimes you might say ربي اغفر لي وارحمني sometimes you might say ربي اغفر sorry ربي اغفر لي وارحمني واهديني واجبرني وعافيني وارزقني you might add وارفعني it's all different ahadith. Learn the different things to make your salah longer. Mm. Remember Allah longer. Now, of course, an imam who's leading in a masjid, he's, his job is not to make the salah very long. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned whoever leads the people should what? Make the salah light for the people. He should make it light. But not to the point where he neglects the, the obligations of the salah and, 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 and the rights of the salah. But the point here is that people who pray on their own just quickly just peck the floor four times. And, and there wasn't much dhikr the, the surah they, they read is not very long And then the, the sixth thing That Imam Ibn, Ibn Qayyim mentioned Which is a characteristic of the hypocrites Which might be the point that we want to transition to next وَالتَّخَلُّفْ عَنْ جَمَاعَتِهَا It's Not coming to the congregational prayer in the masjid Not praying in the congregation Why? Because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud عن, He mentioned That anyone who didn't come to pray Salat al-Jama'ah the, in the masjid at the time of the Prophet because no one would come except for a person who's a clerk, a hypocrite, munafiq. This is known. If you don't pray your salah in the masjid, you're a hypocrite. It's, it, it, it's in, this, is, this, is, this is what the hypocrites do. So these six things, you know what really scared me, Abu Bakr, if I'm being absolutely honest, is how common all six are in some of us. How many salawat have we prayed? Where number one, we prayed it late just before the time went. So the time hasn't gone, but you prayed just before the time went. Prayed it lazily. So, well, show off to people. Fast. Not remembering Allah a lot. And not even in the congregational prayer. Like the six characteristics of hypocrites. In the salah. I think there's times where and we might be, have, have been guilty of doing all six mm. in one salah. Okay, some might be guilty of all six in every salah yeah. throughout the whole day. It's something very, very, very important to fix. So on that last point that you mentioned regarding the issue of praying in congregation, let's talk about that, right? Because as men, right, there's specific things that I mentioned regarding men. And one of them is the prayer, the salah in the congregation, right? Now, what is the ruling when it comes to men having to pray in congregation? So, okay. It's a complicated one. No. So, the ruling 
the, the, these are the most common views. Mm. Yeah, it's either obligatory upon every single able man, or it's fard kifaya, which means it's obligatory on a group of people. Like for example, salat al janazah is not obligatory upon every single person, right? Mm. If a group of people do it. Yeah. Then, uplifts the obligation for then anyone else who does it is sunnah for him, or oh, sorry, it's it's he's fulfilling something that's a sunnah. It's, it's recommended, right? Um, so that's the difference. Now, what's the evidence for both sides? And every single time I've gone through just looking at both sides, and Imam Ibn Qayyim discusses both sides. Akhi, it is. The hardest uh, issues for you to pick a side because their evidence are just so strong on both sides in absolute transparency. And when you look, like, so those who are saying it's not obligatory on every single person, it's like, okay, cool. You might think I can take a break every now and again, right? Even though that's a wrong mentality to have. But those who are arguing with pretty much the same degree of strength and evidence to say that it is obligatory on every single person, bro, they're telling you, bro, it's hellfire if you don't pray in Jama'ah. It's, in, yo, it's, a, it's, 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 it's medicine. To the point where Imam Ibn Taymiyyah actually argues that praying in a congregation is a condition for your salah to even be accepted. As a man or a full man? As a man, of course. Right? And he, and he brings evidence Now although that's not A common view But act the, 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 the fact that it was even discussed And, was to show and strong evidence was brought Do you understand So hmm. So I am not Able to answer to The question of What's the ruling on praying congregational prayer uh, In terms of is it Fard Kifaya fard ain Is it fard on every single person or is it what? A communal obligation. But what we can say is it's an obligation. And at this hadith where the Prophet Sassim said, like there is no salah for the one who lives near a masjid. La salat li jal masjid illa fil masjid wa kama qal. There's no salah for the person who prays salah. There's no salah for a person who lives near a masjid except in the masjid. We'll mention some evidences to show you how, how serious this is. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he that, that, that there was a Sahabi who was a blind Sahabi who came to him. Alright? A blind Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktum, radiallahu anhu. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah. I'm a blind man. And I don't necessarily live close to the masjid or whatever have you. Sometimes, you know, like, can I be excused from the salah in the masjid? The Prophet said, can you hear the adhan? When you hear it, respond. It's a blind sahabi. Like, just, 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 just deep that for that. To me, I remember I heard this. Let me, let me read the hadith, right? So, so you guys can actually see it. So he says, Ya Rasulullah, ana darirun. He goes, I'm a person who what? I'm blind. Shasi'u dar Wali qa'idun. La yula'imuni. La yula'imuni. Right? Fahil tajid li rukhsa an usalli fi bayti. Can, can you find a concession for me? Like because I'm blind and I don't necessarily always have someone appropriate to take me to the masjid. Can you find a, a concession for me to pray in my house? The Prophet said, Tasma'un nida? Can you hear the adhan? Qala na'am. He said, yes. The Prophet said, ma'ajidu laka rukhsa. Then I can't find a way out for you. I can't find a way out for you. Do you understand? Akhi, a blind sahabi is, 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 saying, is being told this. And there's another one, which is the hadith of the Prophet where the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he wanted to. He said, laqad hamamt an amur rajulun. يُصَلِّ بِالنَّاسِ ثُمَّ أُحَرِّقْ عَلَى رِجَالٍ يَتَخَلَّفُونَ عَنِ الْجَمَاعَاتِ بُيُوتَهُمْ The Prophet said, I wanted to. 
go down and burn the houses of the people that were praying in their house and not praying the salah in the jama'ah. يتخلفون على الجماعة بيوتهم. Now the Prophet mentioned another hadith. The reason why he didn't do this is because of the women and children that are in the hadith. And from that we learn that the women and children salat al jama'ah is not obligatory on them. Actually, the Prophet is the most merciful to mankind. He's the most merciful. Arham al khalq. He's the most merciful, right? Yet he said, I wanted to go and burn down the houses of those. Who were not praying the salah in congregation. in congregation. But the only reason I didn't is because of the women and children that are inside and it wasn't obligatory on them. So these is a hadith like this where the scholars took the obligation of what? The obligation of congregational prayer in the masjid. And then you've got narrations from Ibn Abbas, where uh, who's the one of the greatest Sahaba of the Prophet, where, where he came and and he was asked. You know, what do you say about a person who doesn't pray Salah in the masjid? He said, Finnar, he's in the hellfire. The man asked him again, what do you say? He said, he's in the hellfire. He said, okay, cool, I came back to him the next day. He said, Finnar, he's in the hellfire. He said, okay, I came back to him now after a week. He said, oh, so, uh, after a month, where is he? Finnar, the answer didn't change. He's in the hellfire, right? He is in the, in the hellfire. He said, man sami nida thumma lam yajib min ghayri udhrin fala salatala. Anyone who hears the adhan and he doesn't respond to the call, then there is no salah for him. Right? Look at this, what Abu Huraira said. لِأَن تَمْتَلِيَ أُوذُنَا إِبْنَ آدَمْ رَصَاصًا مُذَابًا خَيْرٌ لَهُ أَنْ يَسْمَعَ الْمُنَادِي ثُمَّ لَا يُجِيبُهُ He said, for the son of Adam to have his ears filled with liquid metal. You know when you melt, mm. when, when you heat metal, it, 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 it becomes liquid, right? To have his ears filled with that is better for him than he hears the adhan and he doesn't respond to it. So he's very serious. And all transparency, like I said, the, the other side have also what? A strong argument, right? About the whether praying Salat al Jama'ah is what? Obligatory in the Western. Not those, these are the argument those who say you should. And I mentioned a very small sprinkle of evidences that they mentioned. But the other side who mentioned that no, it's not obligatory. They mentioned it's a communal obligation and highly, 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 highly recommended and encouraged. So I would say, look, people, if you are of a person who's convinced because like, you know, whatever, you know, you, you, you've been convinced in terms of the evidences, the Salat al Jama'ah is obligatory. So you've got, you've got to pray your five daily prayers in, in congregation. And for those maybe who are on the other view, bro, at the very least, bro, at the very least, make a habit of what? Starting to pray more and more in the masjid. Because one thing that's clear is that it is a characteristic of the hypocrites. Mm. And the Prophet did want to burn their houses. And the Prophet did tell a blind Sahabi you still have to come. Mm. Like all, all, all that indicates what? If not wajib on every person, at least highly, 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 mm. highly recommended. Right? So um, start with maybe Fajr, Isha, Asr, add it on until it becomes a habit for you. And this is, of course, one of the reasons why we're so adamant and so keen on brothers and sisters, but mainly brothers starting their own businesses because then you can work at your own schedule. You can decide how to work. And inshallah, what obviously what we recommend is work around the Salah times. Mm -hmm. Make that a core key part of your of your schedule very quickly before we head back to the discussion on the topic of having your own business so that you can have your own schedule primarily to focus on worshiping allah also doing things like seeking knowledge this is something that is very important and and currently myself and abubakar have opened something called the righteous and rich school where we're teaching brothers how to scale to seven figures in a way that's completely halal not for money's sake but so that they can earn wealth to please allah we're in a mission to bring about 1000 righteous and rich millionaires we've already got brothers that have passed six figure mark alhamdulillah many muslim influencers businessmen those who have service-based businesses and they want to know how to make money online, whether it be coaching business, a course, an agency, a community that they monetize. Alhamdulillah, it's a thriving community. Brothers are making money as we speak. So check it out, inshallah ta'ala. It could be the thing that you need to take your business to the next level so that you can have the type of lifestyle that we're talking about so you can worship Allah with ease. To wrap up, let's end on a lighter note, which is let's talk about some of the benefits of Salah. Like at the, at, at the end of the day, like this one thing I was mentioning earlier as well, which is bro, like Salah, like Allah's made it so easy for us. 
so easy for us. Like at the very minimum, just even if you just pray the fard, it's like 17 rak'at in a day. 17. If you say five five minutes for each prayer, that's 25 minutes in a day. Let's say half an hour. Or half an hour. Out I of think 24. Really it's not five minutes for each. We say that, but I think, I think like the, the ones that are four units, at the very least, like a nice seven minutes. No, as in, I'm saying, as in the like, if you're trying, like, if you're looking at it from the angle of this, is the absolute minimum. minimum yeah, like, bro, you're telling me half an hour out of your 23 and a half hours, like, you know, and then you got 23 and a half hours to do everything else you need to do, your work and everything. You couldn't take out half an hour of your day for the one who created you. Like, does that even make sense? Mm. And bearing in mind, like, the salah originally it was, it was, it was meant to be 50. Yeah, <laughs> we got five. It was originally 50. And like we can't even do that. How does that even make sense? And especially because we've been talking a lot to like entrepreneurs and businessmen, mm. I'll give you guys a hack for your businesses, right? If you're trying to scale, scale and get baraka. And there's so many angles you could take it, but let me show you how the salah helps you with regards to money. So a risk is of many types. It could be money, it could be children, it could be whatever, right? But also money, mm. a risk. So, Zakaria alayhi salam, he was praying salah. Rabbi habli thurriyatan tayyiban inna ka sami'u dua fanadithu al-malaika wa huwa qa'imun yusalli fi al-mihrab. Zakaria was an old man. He wanted to have a son. He was so old, his wife was barren. So, he made dua to Allah. Allah give me a son. He's asking for a miracle. What happened? فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمِحْرَبِ He stood up to pray salah in the masjid and the angels came and they did what? They gave him the glad tidings of a son Allah has responded to your dua So he was informed of his rizq when what? When what? He's praying salah If you go literally just to the ayah one or two ayat before that Zakaria comes to visit his his niece Maryam in the in the in, in the masjid. Maryam salam alayhi, the mother of Isa, right? And what was she always doing inside of the masjid there? Praying. And what would happen is she would get food, the food of the winter, the fruits of the winter, which without preservatives and all these, you know, like things that we have now to be able to like grow mangoes. In different seasons I don't even know If you can do that But you know Like yeah, yeah. We can get fruits of From different seasons Right Now But back in those days Can you imagine Like getting like Water Like strawberries and mangoes In winter mm. She would be getting Winter fruits in the summer And summer Summer fruits in the winter. In the winter Or like that And Zakaria was amazed He was like How And she said Allah provides Bighayri hisab Without holding to account The scholars mentioned So back to back We have two incidences In the Quran Right next to each other Maryam was always Praying in the masjid And what would happen Food would come to her And be brought to her From different seasons <laughs> Yeah like Not different places of the world But food Food of different times Different mm. seasons mm. And Zakaria was praying In the masjid As an old man Whose wife is barren Can't give birth Has been told That she's pregnant so there's a connection between salah and provision. Another ayah Allah said, Allah come Allah jinna wal insa illa I did not create the jinn and mankind except that they should worship, worship me. And then Allah said, Ma uridu minhum min rizqin wa ma uridu ay yut'imun inna Allah huwa razaq Allah said, I created you to worship me and I am the one who provides. I, you do your job, you pray, Allah will provide for you. In another ayah, Allah said, Command your family to pray and be patient upon the salah. Allah said, we don't ask you for risk. We don't ask you for provision. We give you risk. We give you risk. I'll tell you guys a little anecdote, a little story. So one time, and this was during COVID, someone owed me money. And I was like struggling with money at the time. Someone owed me money. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, they weren't sending it And it had been a while So I needed the money right So I remember at night time I went to pray I think it was Isha I was praying at home Because it was COVID 
and my phone, you know, Monzo has that ching. Mm. The Monzo bank it has that ching notification if someone sends you money. I'm in salah suddenly here ching in the middle of the salah, and I remember this ayah of Zakariah when he stood up to pray. The angels came to him and told him, "Here's your here's your provision," and I stood up to pray, and literally, I was mm. the money came to me, and. Um, that's if you pray salah, right? And just to mention with regards to the masjid in specific, what's the dua that we were taught to make after when we leave the masjid? Allahumma inni as'aluka min adlik. Oh Allah, I ask you from your bounty. your bounty. So some of the salaf would actually stand outside the masjid when they would leave and they would say, Ya Allah, we obeyed your command to enter the masjid and pray. Now we ask you to because we're going back to the dunya to earn money, to you know, work and hustle and grind. Allah, we ask you to give us from like we did we did what we were supposed to, which was to come to the salah. Now we're going to get provision, and that's from you, Ya Rab. So there's a direct correlation between praying salah and finding blessings in your life, finding money and finding barak. And I got other evidences that I can mention. I think you have a story you want to mention of this as well. I was gonna mention something else which was um like on that same note, like bro, I've seen in my own life, like some of the best networking that I've done has been as a result of being in the masjid. Like whether it's brotherhood, which is a form of risk, like some of the best brothers that I've met have been through the masjid. Whether it's like business networking, man, like <coughs> Premier Supercars Dubai, the the network that brought that together was through the masjid. I've mentioned that story many times. Met the brother uh, outside the masjid, and he connected me to the brothers that I ended up setting up with, and it's. Uh, it's 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 crazy man and to think that we overlook salah in general so easily and even more so salah in congregation like you know when you're praying you know like especially when you're praying in like a sunni like mosque and you know you're shoulder to shoulder feet to feet that connection like you know you know like it's sad because these days you don't really get it but when you when you get Two people, one on each side, and they're both shoulder to shoulder, feet. It's good, isn't it? You just, yeah, it just, you just feel a connection where it's like, bro, we're unstoppable together. Like, you know, like, it's, 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 it's weird. It's just like, yeah, bro. It's, and, and, and like, you don't get that anywhere. It's like, bro, this guy just, I've never met my, he just stepped forward. We're, 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 on, we're, like, we're on the front, like, like, shoulder to shoulder. Like, this is it. Like, it's, it's extremely powerful, man. And it's sad to think that so many... Because when, when you think back to times when you weren't praying, it's cool there are, th there are pockets of, like, fond memories. But generally, like, that, that period... Just, you know how they say the Dark Ages or medieval times? Well, like, that's how it feels. That's how it's... Because it's like, you know, even the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa when he used to be stressed or he used to always say to, to, to Bilal, uh, radiallahu anhu, to give the adhan so they can, what, bring? Is it peace? Tranquility? What was the word? Yeah. Um, Arihna, ya Bilal. Bring us peace. Peace. Bring us peace. Like, that's like, yeah. so, like, now it's kind of become something that, like, it's become a cultural thing or it's become like a chore. Where, oh, okay, mama, I'll do it. Just give me five minutes. Let me go. And it's like, people do it now. It stresses them out. When what is, it's supposed to relieve your stress. And instead, it's adding to your stress. Something's gone wrong. Something's gone crucially, crucially wrong. And hopefully, having watched through this podcast and we've got many more to come on the topic of the Salah going into possibly each of the things that we, each of the topics that we mentioned but in a lot more detail and many other topics around the Salah. Hopefully, inshallah, this will be a reason, a catalyst for your perception of the Salah to completely change. And there's a video that I know a lot of people mention uh, that you did a long time ago. It's a black and white one. It's called the Salah. Like you never knew it before or something along those lines. We're going to do a better version of it, inshallah. We'll do a better version of it. You can watch it, we can link it below for we'll now. We'll link it below, yeah. inshallah. But Imam Ibn Qayyim goes through how to attain khushu in the end of this book. And we're going to go through that, inshallah. Inshallah. So if you're looking forward to that video and you want to see that video, make sure you comment down below and uh, share this video. So hopefully you benefited from this video, inshallah, and hopefully it will be a reason for your salah to be transformed. If you found this video to be beneficial, then... I have a feeling that you will find this video that you're seeing on the screen. Please, Sufyan, don't embarrass me. Please make sure there's a video here on the screen. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it extremely beneficial. It's about the dunya, how it's worthless, and how you can make sure that you attain your focus on your salah when you're in the salah instead of thinking about your work and other things. 
dunya related with that said we'll see you on the next episode on monday which of course will be a rich episode from righteous and rich subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh